Hi, I'm Jeff Perry, the Webbench Manager at Texas Instruments. In this presentation, I'm going to talk about Webbench electrical simulation. In previous uh, presentations, we've talked about how Webbench can create an optimized design for you. And so the question would arise, why would we even need to do electrical simulation? Well, first of all, we want to identify any additional problems. Uh, the design has been configured for stable operation, but you might want to verify it under the dynamic conditions that uh, you require. Uh, so you can try solutions uh, such as improved line and load transient response, changing components to improve those uh, parameters. You can try minimizing your output voltage ripple, and you can modify your control loop to achieve uh, different stability criteria. You can also visualize the results in an interactive waveform viewer that allows you to do detailed analysis of your simulation results. This is what the uh, electrical simulation page looks like. To get to the electrical simulation page, you'd click on the sine wave uh, icon in the Webbench navigation bar up here in the right, on the top right, I should say. There's a drop down that allows you to specify your simulation type. Uh, there's also a button that lets you start your simulation. Simulation types include Bode plot, line transient, load transient, startup, and steady state. When the simulation is completed, you'll see a row of icons down here allow you to probe different points in the uh, circuit. And on the right side is the Webbench waveform viewer that allows you to click and drag to zoom and uh, do uh, a closer look at your simulation results. This is a blow up, for example, of a Bode plot. And in the red here, you can see the gain. And it crosses a zero here at about uh, 35 kilohertz. At that point, the phase is roughly at about uh, negative 145 which gives us about 35 degrees of phase margin for stable operation. As I mentioned before, within the waveform viewer itself, you can click and drag your mouse to zoom in and get details. If you want to zoom out, you click and drag up and to the left. So zooming in is from the upper left to the lower right. Zooming out is the reverse of that. Uh, the tiles at the bottom allow you to examine different nodes in the circuit. Let's take a case we're going to look at the load transient response for two different parts. One of them is an LM22680, which is a voltage mode PWM control scheme part. Uh, this has a uh, low part count because it's a simple switcher, and it's very easy to design with. We also have an LM25576, which is also a member of the simple switcher uh, product line. It uses an emulated peak current mode uh, control scheme, and this uh, is designed to give you faster transient response. So let's evaluate how these two different control schemes compare with each other. Our design criteria is going to be 14 to 22 volts in, 3.3 out at 2 amps. These are the two schematics showing the uh, differences between the two control schemes. They're both integrated switch parts. And here's the simulation results. In red at the top there is the PWM part. And you can see that the uh, overshoot uh, is uh, about uh, 20 uh, millivolts or so, uh, and the recovery time is uh, roughly in the order of about um, <coughs> uh, 50, uh, uh, I should say 500 microseconds, maybe about 600. For the emulated current mode part, the overshoot is uh, roughly the same, uh, but the recovery time is faster. Here's an overlay of the two plots, which you can do in Webbench using the advanced uh, waveform controls. And you can see a little closer that the uh, uh, pulse width modulated did have somewhat longer recovery time, uh, but the overshoot and undershoot was less than the emulated uh, current mode part. And so you can see here the trade-off recovery time versus overshoot, undershoot uh, can be made very visible uh, using this tool. Let's try a live demo uh, using the Webbench tool. We're going to use the uh, similar design requirements, but we're going to be lowering our current now to 1 amp. Uh, we're going to use an optimization setting of 3, and we're going to use a uh, uh, LM25010 as our part. Let's run a load transient simulation and see how that part does. Okay, here we've got a design using the LM25010, and here's our design inputs. We're going to go to the simulation page by clicking on the simulation icon in the upper right.
Okay, here's where we select our simulation type. As I mentioned before, there's different simulation types. Uh, since this is a constant on time part, we don't actually require a Bode plot uh, simulation. So we're just going to specify right now the load transient. Uh, to configure our load transient parameters, we can go click on the uh, load icon here in the schematic over on the right. And this will call up a dialog that lets you change things like the initial current, which in this case is 1 amp. The uh, midway current is going to be 0.1 amps. And then it's going to come back up to its initial 1 amp value. The delay time before simulation uh, can be specified by clicking on the TD. The rise time uh, and fall times can be uh, selected by clicking on the TR and TF. Uh, we're going to uh, reduce our rise and fall times here and give this thing a little more of a uh, challenge uh, by setting that to uh, 5 microsecond uh, rise and fall time. The pulse width here is uh, 500 microseconds. I'm going to save our changes and then start our simulation. Okay, our simulation is now completed. Um, I'm going to go ahead and remove the input voltage waveform by right-clicking and saying remove input waveform. And I'm going to add the I out waveform. So the I out waveform we can see here, the load current started at 1 amp, dropped down to 0.1 amps as we specified, and then came back up to 1 amp. Uh, as we can see here, the, uh, there was an overshoot uh, when the current dropped and it was an overshoot of about 250 millivolts. Uh, on the recovery time, there was no undershoot. You can see that the, uh, we can zoom in here by clicking and dragging the mouse, and uh, the recovery time is extremely fast for one of these constant on-time parts, uh, much faster than a PWM or emulated current load. But with this very uh, rapid rise and fall time of, this, of the uh, load transient, there was a bit of overshoot. Let's compare that with a prior simulation, which we can do by clicking on the Simulation List tab down here. I had previously run a load transient simulation that was using a slower rise and fall time. Let's click on the V-out waveform. And uh, also the I-out waveform for that prior simulation. And you can see here that uh, the uh, I-out fall time is much slower in this case than it was for our uh, simulation we just ran. We click on the V-out waveform for the, si the prior simulation and hold our mouse down. We can uh, highlight that waveform and we can see that there is really absolutely no overshoot or undershoot for that slower rise and fall time. And so if we compare that with the simulation we just ran with the faster rise and fall time, you can see the differences pop out at you there. There's also advanced waveform controls. If you click the waveform controls button, this allows you to manipulate things like uh, the color of the waveforms and uh, the line thickness. You can also click the marker button up here to enable the marker, and this will show a pop-up that allows you to look at individual uh, values of the waveform at specific points. You can also compare to previous uh, designs and simulations if you click on the Compare to Other Devices and Designs button. From here you can go in and select previous designs where you've run simulations and overlay those with your current design. So we see that the WebBench uh, Electrical simulation has a SPICE-based simulator with an easy-to-use interface. Using this, we can identify and solve dynamic electrical issues, such as line and load transit response, a minimization of your output voltage ripple, and if you want to, to modify your control loop parameters. The Waveform Viewer allows you to overlay simulations and see changes. You can uh, interactively zoom in and see details of your waveforms. Webbench tools save you time. Thank you for your time, and I encourage you to try Webbench tools yourself at ti.com slash webbench.